Good morning. My name is Reverend Julie Sterling. Welcome to Suffolk Presbyterian Church. I'm so happy to have you join us as we continue our Lenten journey. Before we begin our worship service today, I'd like to take a moment to lift up some announcements for the upcoming week. an ordinary fisherman who heard an extraordinary call. He wasn't rich or educated, but familiar with hard work. He was quick-tempered and impetuous, but possessed a passion that would change the world. He left everything to follow his teacher, yet struggled with doubt and fear. But Jesus saw in him what others did not, a rock on which to build his church. Join us as we explore Simon Peter. Please join me responsibly in our call to worship. Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Blessed be the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Brothers and sisters, let us worship God.
let us pray for the cleansing of our hearts, confessing our sins to the one whose mercy is everlasting. Pray with me. Redeeming God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart and have not loved our neighbors as we ought. We have strayed from your commandments. Do not remember our sins, but forgive our iniquities, that we may fix our eyes on you and sin no more. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers, by the faith of Christ, your sins are forgiven. May you delight in the joy of your salvation. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. The peace of Christ be with you. Hello friends. I'm sitting in my backyard and I'm thinking about all the work I need to do now that spring is coming. The bushes need trimming, the beds need weeding, I've got a lot of dead leaves from over the winter to clean out. I want to get things ready for springtime, for the flowers that I'll be planting, for the birds coming back. When I was on a trip recently I bought myself a gift. I bought myself a hummingbird feeder. Now hummingbirds are smaller than the palm of your hand, and but they travel very far. They migrate some as far as Canada all the way down to Mexico. And so when they come back from Mexico seeking the warm weather, some will stop and stay in Virginia and some will travel on to even further north. These little teeny birds arrive hungry and weak and they need nourishment. So they'll gather around this bird feeder. They'll be attracted by these bright colors. And on the inside, I'll put a nectar, a sugar water, that will help their bodies to be restored so that they can continue to do their work. This time of year in, in the church, we have a period that we call Lent. And it's a time that we're doing a lot of work now. God wants us to stop and think about how we can clean up physically and spiritually, just like I'll be cleaning up the beds in the yard. We want to examine our lives and see what we could be doing better, what we should get rid of, and what we should bring in. It's helping us as we follow Christ on his journey to the cross. A time that will be joyful when we have the empty tomb, but we want to be ready and refreshed at that time of Easter. So we spend this time thinking about how we can clean things up. Now, the scripture for today um, is a psalm, and the psalms are like poems or songs, many of them written by the ancient King David. He did a lot of messing up in his life, and he often turned to God to ask for help in finding ways to do better. In this psalm, he says, God, you desire truth in the inward being, that he knows God wants us in our heart, on the inside, to be clean and ready to do his work, to speak the truth, to spread the word. And so the psalm asks, create in me a clean heart, put in a new and right spirit, restore me to the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. That's like what we want during this Lent time. Restore our hearts, just like we're restoring the hummingbird. Give us a willing spirit so that we can do your work, just like the hummingbirds need to be restored so that they can continue on their journey. So I want you to think about that today 
about ways that you can improve on the inside, maybe on the outside too, so that you can have a truthful and clean heart and approach that time of Easter and be ready to celebrate and be refreshed and restored and go on to do God's work. Let's have a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us every step in the way on our journeys. Help us to find time and the willing spirit to examine our lives and see what we can do better, how we can be kinder, how we can be more helpful, how we can make yours a better world. Give us that willing spirit as we move forward to the joyous time of Easter because we want to be ready to celebrate and do your work. Amen. Friends, I invite you now to join with me in prayer. Let us pray. Your word, O God, has power to change our lives and to create a whole new world. As we meditate on your word this day, fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may treasure your word with our whole heart and fix our eyes on you. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Hear the word of the Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Basidia in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and whoever where and where I am, there will be my servants also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, friends. Blessings to you and yours. This Sunday, our theme focuses on the gift of forgiveness. As our journey shifts, we turn our eyes to Jerusalem and our hearts are reminded of the final steps of Jesus. In our reading from John 20, 12, 20 through 33. Okay, one second. <clears throat> Still more time. <clears throat> Good morning, friends. Blessings to you and yours. This Sunday, our lesson focuses on the gift of forgiveness. As our journey shifts and we turn our eyes to Jerusalem, our hearts are reminded of the final steps in Jesus' journey. In our reading from John 12, 20 through 33, Jesus tells us of the, that the hour has come. We know what he is speaking of and what it means for him. We also know why this had to be done. God is a forgiving God. He gave his only son that we may live. This week is a time for preparation. We must endure the realities of Holy Week. We must look it in the eye. The gift of the empty cross at Easter could only happen 
by Jesus' own death and suffering, his own blood, sweat, and tears. We are free because he paid the price for us. God knows our brokenness and wants to be close to us. The only way possible was for a holy sacrifice. Even now through the gift of the spirit, the sacraments and the teachings of Jesus, God still is reaching out and working on us today. In our gospel lesson from John, we come to terms with how hard the journey truly was for Jesus. He knew what had to be done and what it would, it would endure. And this brought up a plethora of emotions. We must always remember that Jesus experienced the pain and suffering of the cross as a man so that God could understand our own suffering because Jesus endured temptation, loss, pain, suffering, and death for us. We can look at him with confidence and follow too. We hear his words and learn from him. We know that Jesus, through God, is fully invested in our lives. The gift of the empty cross is wasted if we do not take what we have learned and search for what is missing in our lives and grow. Friends, the truth is that sin is still among us, even with the empty cross. It still is part of our lives and we struggle daily to do what is right and choose the path of love. This past week, we witnessed the tragic death of eight people in Atlanta, Georgia, at the hand of a single gunman. There's not been an official statement of why this event occurred. What made this young man decide to act out towards others in violence? We do know that certain people were targeted, that many which were Asian American women we also know that many Asian American citizens have been targeted over the past year due to racism caused by fear or confusion due to COVID-19. The other day, a 76-year-old Asian woman was punched in the face by a man randomly on the streets of San Francisco. She fought back, but she was hurt. It is assumed that many others have also endured violence as well. The Asian American community tends to remain silent on such issues and has done so for generations. We do know that this is not an isolated event. Racism plagues our nation and it always has. Still, we are a people of love and we can do better. We must choose a different way. We must grow and we must strive to be better than what's in our hearts in a moment. We must choose a better way to love one another. We are created in God's image. Our differences as little as they may be, are expression of God's beauty. They are made for a reason and they only divide us because we let them. Still, no matter how many times we take the wrong path or go the wrong way, how many times we waver, God is a God of forgiveness and he will always forgive you and I. In our Lenten study from Adam Hamilton titled Simon Peter, Faithful and Flawed Disciple, we are reminded that Jesus chose to build his ministry around people who were flawed just like you and I. 
Even Simon Peter, who was considered his rock, falls short time and time again. Yet the gift of the empty cross for Simon Peter and for us helps us to realize that forgiveness and grace is meant for us. And when Simon Peter realized that, he shared his broken moments. He showed his sin to others so that they could believe as well. That God could forgive him and could forgive us as well. We too must be brave enough to share our brokenness and how God loves us. And when we do, others can mend and learn from Jesus as well. Friends, I know that it is often hard to choose the right thing to do, especially when tensions are high and we are hurting. We live in a world where <laughs> we have a few seconds in our daily life to go from one place to another. Everything is the touch of the screen. We're used to instant gratification. This year in itself has been very hard. In our reading today, that we are reminded that God created us to deal with change. Jesus states that just as a grain of salt, a grain of wheat must die to bear fruit, we must be transformed when we endure the gift of the empty cross. And when we do that, we are living out our full potential of grace. And others will also learn from us and trust us and then follow Jesus through our love in them. Friends, hearing these words, I ask you to join with me in saying, Amen.
Let us join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trinity White Plume just turned 13. Like the gardens she has newly learned to plant and tend, she is growing in extraordinary ways. Where Trinity lives on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, which is roughly the size of the state of Connecticut, there is but one grocery store. Moreover, Oglala, Lakota County, where the reservation is located, has the lowest per capita income in the country and consistently ranks as the poorest county in the nation. During the pandemic, what was already a food desert has become even more so, heightening the challenge of food accessibility for Trinity's family and all the families living in Pine Ridge. Thanks to gifts from One Great Hour of Sharing, the garden projects of Owe Aku are making a difference. Owe Aku is a grassroots nonprofit organization that puts people in charge of their own food supply, nutrition, health, and well being by reclaiming ancestral wisdom and teaching Lakota history and culture. The Presbyterian Church USA partners with Oeaku through the Presbyterian Hunger Program, PHP, supported by gifts to One Great Hour of Sharing. For the Lakota, there is a strong spiritual connection between the land and the people. Quote, although traditionally we're not an agrarian people, we have evolved into wanting to preserve the land and preserve the people on the land by beginning our garden project, said Development Director Kent Lebsock. He continued, we thought the best way to do this is with the families and especially young people. And thus was born AMA's Freedom School, which encourages youth to learn not only about growing food but also about the medicinal and ceremonial plants that have been used for generations. Trinity is a young emerging leader with the potential to carry the program forward for many years. She attends and assists with every class and workshop put on by Oyaku. And in turn, she and the other students have begun to teach their families Trinity is also proving herself to be gifted in other areas that benefit the reservation by helping with bookkeeping and other office work. She says, I want to learn my traditions from Amma's Freedom School so that I can keep them alive for future generations. And with our support, we believe that she indeed will continue to grow and make a difference. Gifts to One Great Hour of Sharing help address the root causes of hunger in places around the world, places like the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and others where food security is a serious need. Please give generously, for when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Let us pray. God, who plants gardens and tends people, make us gardeners with you and all those who need food. May what we give, what we preserve, and what we grow, 
make lives of nourishment for all. Amen. Friends, as we prepare for our prayer of intercession in Lord's Prayer, I'd like us to take a minute to lift up prayers for our friends at Lake Prince Woods, our friends and loved ones dealing with illness, brokenness, and loss, as well as our frontline workers, doctors, nurses, scientists, teachers, students, and all those who are keeping us safe during uncertain times. We'll take a moment of silence and then join in prayer. Friends, join with me responsively. Let us pray. During the final days of his earthly life, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, and in faithful obedience, he opened the way to eternal salvation. Let us open our hearts this day as we lift up our deepest needs and concerns to the one who is mighty to save. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We pray for all leaders and people, and by the power of your cross, to drive out all violence, domination, and injustice in our world, as you draw us to your Christ. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We pray for our war-raged world, that you would teach us to walk together in your way of righteousness and peace. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We pray for the vocation of the church, that our prayers would bear the fruit of action as we hear the cries of pain and suffering of those in need. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We pray for the poor, the terrified, the oppressed, and those who are too much alone, that they may find a home in you as we serve them in your name. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. As your son anticipated his death on the cross in light of your steadfast love, may all who have died who are, or who are dying be at rest in your eternal care. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we glorify you, Almighty God, with unending thanks and praise. Amen. Let us join in our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we prepare for our offering today, I invite you to hear these words. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and takes on new life, it remains just a single grain. With grateful hearts, let us bring the fruits of our lives to God. Let us pray. As the high priest blessed Abraham and offered his tithes of bread and wine at your holy altar, 
May our gifts be made perfect through Christ to glorify you and bless the world. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it has been a wonderful day of worship. Next week, we will join Jesus in his final steps on his way to the cross. Be prepared and ready to witness and be transformed. Remember, the gift of grace is a gift of love meant for us to grow by. For Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servants be also. Go in peace to love and serve Christ. May God, whose hand has written the law of love upon your heart, fill you with peace from deep within and the commitment to love in harmony and the blessing of God who endures, forgives and calls us home, be with you now and always. I send you out today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.